Chant and dance as much as possible in this human form of life. Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakhaya Chakshur Unmalitam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Jena Bhotale Swayam Rupa Kadha Mayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Eti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadhi Paschatya Deshatarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashthaya Bhutale Shri Mate Aindra Prabhu Eti Namine Namaste Shripat Aindraya Namarasa Vinodine Nitai Janava Sarvasva Shri Radha Swasra Sangine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadharam Shri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Gurave Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Ananda Lila Maya Vigrahaya Hema Vadivya Chavisundaraya Tasmai Mahaprema Rasa Pradaya Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Chaitanya Chandraya Namo Namaste Hare Krishna Before I begin, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to His Divine Grace Shila Prabhupada for so mercifully gifting His glorious, wonderful disciples to all of us who have been traveling around the globe preaching the message of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and preaching the holy names of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. Secondly, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude and offer my millions upon millions of Dandavat Pranams at the lotus feet of Nitilila Pravishta Om Vishnupad Parabhamsa Swami Rupanuga Acharya Varya Shripad Aindra Prabhu, whose appearance day we are celebrating today. And I would want to beg his blessing so that I can glorify him to the best of my ability. And lastly, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to Kirtida Sundari Mataji, Preeti Vilasini Mataji, and all the senior exalted devotees and all the wonderful glorious Vaishnavas who are present on this call for very kindly inviting me to your Sangha so that on this auspicious day, I can purify my tongue by speaking few words of glorification of Sri Pada Indra Prabhu. I beg all the devotees to kindly keep me in your prayers so that I can Glorify Aindra Prabhu to the best of my ability. Please accept my very humble obeisances. Vancha Kalpatur Obhyascha. Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha. Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the fifth canto, in the episode of Maharaj Rahugan, Shukadev Goswami makes a very interesting and very wonderful point. Shukadev Goswami says, Rahogane tatapasana yati, Nache jaya nirva panad grihitva, Nachandasa naiva jalagni surya vidamahat padarajo bishakam. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto 5, Chapter 12, Text 12. Shukadev Goswami says, Rahogane tatapasana yati, O Rahogan, O Maharaj Rahogan, 
etat this knowledge of the absolute truth tapasana yati you cannot understand the absolute truth just by performing rules and regulations or just by performing austerities na che jaya nirvapana grihitva one cannot even understand the absolute truth by leaving the household duties of grahastha ashram and entering sanyas so one cannot understand the absolute truth by leaving the home and taking sanyas while one cannot even understand the truth by just performing rules and regulations or by just performing austerities न छेजया निर्वापणा गृहीतवा शुकदेव गोस्वामी सेज न छेजया इट इज नॉट इवन बाय सेलिब्रेसी वन मे बी अ ब्रह्मचारी बट दैट स्टिल डजंट गॅरंटी दैट वन विल गेट कृष्ण न छेजया निर्वापणा गृहीतवा एंड ही सेज वन मे बी अ ब्रह्मचारी बट वन मे स्टिल नॉट गेट कृष्ण ऑन द कॉन्ट्ररी इट्स आल्सो पॉसिबल दैट वन मे सबमर्ज वन सेल्फ इनसाइड वॉटर during winter now we know that is very difficult to submerge oneself inside water during winter shukadev goswami says that is also possible someone may even do that or there may be someone who may surround himself with hot blazing fire or there may be someone who may sit under the sun during summer Shukadev Goswami says, even by doing all these things, one will still not get Krishna. It is still not guaranteed that one will know the absolute science. Now rises the important question, dear devotees: Then how can one understand Krishna if it is not through austerities and if it is not just through mere renunciation and if it is not through submerging oneself in cold water in winter or by sitting under blazing sun or by even remaining a brahmachari? then the question arises how can we understand krishna shukadev goswami makes a very brilliant point he says rahu ganai tat tapasana yati na chejaya nirvapana grihitva na chhandasa naiva jal agni surya vina mahat pad rajobhishekam he says vina mahat pad rajobhishekam till the time one doesn't smear upon his head the dust of the lotus feet of pure vaishnavas the word used is mahat which means exalted devotees till the time one doesn't smear the dust of the lotus feet of pure vaishnavas upon their head till that time perfection in in spiritual life is a far fetched reality one may do different things that are possible but till the time one is not favored by a pure vaishnava till the time there is no kripa till the time there is no mercy upon a particular individual till that time one can never advance in bhakti how much ever we try on our own and we find that this is the repeated theme in shrimad bhagavatam not just in canto 5 but starting from the first canto till the 12th canto and likewise kaviraj goswami continues that theme even in in shri chaitanya charitamrita time and again he makes this point as to how it is only pure vaishnava's mercy that can help us advance on this path of krishna bhakti and it is not just by our own endeavors so we find that the reason why we are all gathered today is we are all performing krishna bhakti to the best of our ability but we hope and pray that by speaking about shri pada indra prabhu on this day who is a mahat who is a paramahamsa vaishnav may we become the kripa patra may we become the recipients of mercy of shri pada indra prabhu and may we also advance little on our path of krishna bhakti of attaining krishna in this lifetime so having said this we now try to begin our conversation we find dear devotees that this is what shila prabhupad says in the last phrase of the fifth canto chapter 12 text 12 of the shrimad bhagavatam shila prabhupad says that there are many other processes to understand the absolute truth but the absolute truth is only revealed to one who has attained the mercy of a great devotee very crystal clear philosophy dear devotees prabhupada is time and again reiterating the same point that without sadhu guru kripa without the mercy of a pure vaishnav we can never progress on this path of krishna bhakti so we find that before we dive into aindra prabhu's life 
in Brindavan, which everyone is very much familiar with, we find in the whole of our Krishna consciousness movement, there is probably no one who has not heard the name of Shripad Ayendra Prabhu. Right from a toddler to a devotee who has been practicing this, this path for about four or five decades, every single one has at least heard the name of Shripad Ayendra Prabhu. He needs absolutely no introduction for all of us. But nonetheless, just to set the benchmark for our discussion and to purify our consciousness, we will try to see as to how Shripad Ayendra Prabhu joined the Krishna consciousness movement. So on the 12th of March, 1953, that's roughly around 68 years ago, a very beautiful young Tejasvi, effulgent boy, who was very skilled, very talented, he appeared to a musically inclined family. And why do I say musically inclined family? Well, for the fact that his parents, his father was into music and his brothers were also into music. And naturally, by the time he grew up, he was, he was given the name as Edward Stryker. And as we know in America, the Edward becomes Eddie. Like the Alexander, if someone has a name Alexander, Alexander turns up into Sasha. Likewise, if, if, if it's an Indian child, if his name is Madhav, it turns into Maddie. If someone's name is Gopal, it turns into Gopi. So in America, we find somehow or the other, everyone has a nickname. Likewise, the Edward turned into Eddie and he was very well known amongst his friend circle as Eddie Stryker. So Eddie Stryker, right from his teenage years, because he came from a very musically inclined family, he was playing the bass guitar. He was into the bass guitar as his profession. And somehow or the other, by the Lord's supreme arrangement, when he was in Washington, DC, the devotees were out on street Sankirtan on Nagar Sankirtan. And naturally, because Eddie was so much into music, the sound of Mridanga, the sound of Kartal, and the different sound of chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamudra was something that he had not come across. So naturally, he got inclined into this music and he started following the devotees. So the devotees were walking ahead. The lead Kirtaniya was walking ahead and chanting and dancing with his troop. And Eddie, young Eddie, was following them behind. So much so that the slippers that he was wearing, at one time, one of the slippers was, was left behind because he was so keen on following the devotees that somehow or the other, one slipper was left behind. So when the lead Kirtaniya, he saw this, he turned towards Eddie and said that, why don't you go and get your slippers? We will wait for you. You can go and get your slippers and then we will continue on our street Sankirtan. But Eddie did not want to miss out on this opportunity. He said, I will have a lot of chances to buy various other slippers, but I, I do not want to miss out on this opportunity of being in association of the devotees. And sure enough, he ended up following the devotees and he reached the local Iskon temple. And dear devotees, that was the start of Eddie's Krishna Bhakti in this lifetime. Not hearing any philosophy as such, but the first encounter with the devotees was through the Harinam Sankirtan. And later when he met the devotees, he read the book of Isha Upanishad. And then he was completely convinced of this philosophy of Krishna consciousness. And very soon, Eddie joined the near Iskon Temple. And on the day of Nityananda Trayodashi, the day Nityananda Prabhu appeared, Adi Guru Nityananda Rai, when he appeared on this world, Srila Prabhupada accepted Edi into this Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya and gave him an immortal name that still remains immortal in the pages of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Srila Prabhupada gave him the transcendental name Ayindra Das, Ayindra Prabhu. On the day of Nityananda Trayodashi, one more moon 
appeared on this dark horizon of Kali by the name Ayendra Prabhu. And in, during those days, as Ayendra Prabhu later describes, that book distribution and Harinam Sankirtan were the main two things that were the backbone of the Krishna consciousness movement. Devotees would go out for book distribution and devotees would also go out for Harinam Sankirtan. So much so that during the days when he was in Washington, D.C., the whole temple had only 19 devotees. But of that 19 devotees, 18 devotees would go out on the streets to perform Harinam Sankirtan. That's a very large number, dear devotees. That's almost 99% of the whole temple going out every single day to perform Harinam Sankirtan. And likewise, when Ayendra Prabhu later, when he moved to Sri Radha Govinda Mandir in Brooklyn, you see, we all at one point or the other would have been to Radha Govinda Mandir, Brooklyn. And that is the where that is the place where Ayendra Prabhu stayed from 1981 until 1986. For about five years, that was the base of Sripad Ayendra Prabhu. And even during those days in Brooklyn, Ayendra Prabhu describes that about 250 devotees would go out on the streets on weekends. I repeat, 250 devotees out on the streets. We can imagine the atmosphere that it would create if 250 devotees are there on the streets chanting and dancing. And 125 devotees would be on one side of the Broadway. 125 devotees would be on another side of the Broadway. And 250 devotees would converge at one point. And there would be about 20 mridangas. We can imagine how outrageous the sound would be when 250 devotees are chanting and dancing on top of their lungs. Aindra Prabhu describes that is how Hare Krishna became a household name because all of Prabhupada's disciples were either distributing books or were distributing Harinam Sankirtan. And these were the two principal gifts that Srila Prabhupada offered to all of us. Nam Sankirtan, congregational chanting of the holy names and distributing of the transcendental books. So, from 1981 up till 1986, Aindra Prabhu would do 14, 14 hours of Harinam Sankirtan. <laughs> let, let that sink in, dear devotees. Let that digest. 14 hours of Harinam Sankirtan. We see on festival days, sometimes when we lead Kirtan, we end up leading for 30 minutes or 45 minutes or an hour or an hour and a half. And by the time it's an hour and an hour and a half, our vocal cords are completely drained out. Our vocal cords go for a toss. We can imagine if 14 hours of Harinam Sankirtan, not one day, not two days, but every single day for years together when he was there in the US, 14 hours Harinam Sankirtan. And Ayendra Prabhu would not have the conventional way of doing Harinam Sankirtan. He would not just walk around the streets serving the holy name, but he was so skilled. Not only was he skilled as far as music is concerned, but he was also so artistic that he converted a bus into a moving temple. Dear devotees, what I'm about to show right now will just blow our minds completely if we have not seen anything like this. This is what Ayendra Prabhu created. Now, if we see to the right, to the right side, we find there are tires. So it's actually a bus, but Ayendra Prabhu transformed that bus into a complete temple. We, we see it looks like a perfect temple, a perfect ornate temple. And this moving bus would go to different places of New York City. It would go to Brooklyn. It would go to Manhattan. It would go to Jackson Heights, where there are predominantly more Indians, it would go to Queens and Ayendra Prabhu would target the areas where there are more and more Indians who are familiar with the chanting of the holy names. Just, it's, it's a sight to behold. It's a feast for the eyes, dear devotees. Just look at his artistic work, single-handedly coming up with such an innovative idea and such a brilliant idea so that if, if normal people are not attracted to the chanting of the holy names, may they get attracted to this artistic work that he had created. 
so that yena kena prakarena hook or crook let them get attracted to this krishna consciousness movement and and we see probably there would be no one on this call who would not agree to this fact that this is nothing less than a masterpiece we find there are different traveling bus parties but to have something like this which is almost like a proper golden temple standing in different places of new york city it can attract anyone even an atheist would get attracted seeing this this is how skilled ayendra prabhu was so not just music not just this artistic work but ayendra prabhu was also ambidextrous he could use both his hands to the best like many times we find there are many videos where ayendra prabhu is either writing or he is decorating radha sham sundar and vrindavan and he is using both his hands to decorate sham sundar ji or using both his hands to declare decorate radha govinda in brooklyn so he was not only good with his right hand he was equally good with his left hand he could write with his left hand he could sign with his left hand he could paint deities with his left hand and he could play harmonium with his right hand he could play the flute with his right hand he could play the mridangas and the drums and the kartals with his right hand so he was equally good in both right and left completely ambidextrous but in the year of 1986 aindra prabhu decided to pack his bags aindra prabhu decided to pack his marbles in his in his own regal way that he mentions he decided to pack his bags in 1986 and decided to come to shri vrindavan dham why because he had his desire of having a traveling bus in vrindavan exactly the similar way that he had in new york city so he decided to come to vrindavan with this desire of creating such a traveling bus that would go to different places of india and that would stop by and he could chant for hours and hours and hours together so that was the desire which which aindra prabhu came to shri vrindavan dham with a one ticket from new york city till delhi and from delhi to vrindavan with this one ticket of giving the holy names in every town and village of india but here comes the interesting part when ayendra prabhu came to vrindavan dham with this desire there was an accountant by the name kapoor ji and one day it so happened that shila prabhupad came in the dream of kapoor ji and prabhupad was crying and weeping and asking kapoor ji that why is in there any 24 hour kirtan in krishna balaram mandir because in 1975 shila prabhupad had started a 24 hour kirtan prabhupad himself had inaugurated a 24 hour kirtan in 1975 but sadly when prabhupad departed this world in 1977 by the january of 1978 the 24 hour kirtan almost collapsed there was no 24 hour kirtan in the temple so shila prabhupad came in the dream of kapoor ji the accountant and was crying and telling him why isn't there a 24 hour kirtan i dedicated my blood and sweat and tears to start a 24 hour kirtan but i see no one is taking up this process so when kapoor ji got up from the dream he himself had tears seeing prabhupad have tears so immediately he ran towards aindra prabhu who had just come to krishna balaram mandir kapoor ji went to aindra prabhu and explained the whole dream as to what prabhu had desired now here comes aindra prabhu's masterpiece when aindra prabhu heard this aindra prabhu thought to himself that kapoor ji could have come and told this to anyone there are so many devotees in krishna balaram mandir and kapoor ji could have explained this dream to anyone but he of all the people he came and told me which means prabhupad wants me to start the 24 hour kirtan which means prabhupad wants me to reinaugurate hari naam sankirtan krishna balaram mandir such a beautiful understanding aindra prabhu could have just carried on with his desire of having a traveling bus but we find a real disciple a sat sishya is someone who aligns his mood with the mood of shri guru 
he doesn't do something that he wants whimsically but he does something that his shri guru wants out of him and prabhupad wanted someone to start the 24 hour kirtan reinaugurate the 24 hour kirtan in krishna balaram mandir and aindra prabhu took the onus upon himself to reinaugurate this 24 hour kirtan so in the 90, year of 1986 when aindra prabhu came from america to vrindavan dham we find that aindra prabhu after that he never left vrindavan dham come what may there were so many reasons for him to leave vrajadham there were health issues there were so many other factors but somehow or the other aindra prabhu had so much brajnishta in his heart that he made sure that he never left the land of vrindavan and for the next 24 years they were devotees aindra prabhu gave his life for the 24 hour kirtan for 24 years he served as the director as the head as the leader of the 24 hour kirtan by giving his blood by giving his sweat by giving his tears in vrindavan dham and on the day of vijay dashmi aindra prabhu decided to start the 24 hour kirtan that 24 hour kirtan which had completely collapsed after shila prabhupad's departure aindra prabhu took it upon himself to take this baton that shila prabhupad had given to him of reinaugurating the 24 hour kirtan upon himself on the day of vijay dashmi aindra prabhu again successfully reinaugurated hari naam sankirtan the chanting of the holy names hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare he started this on the day of vijay dashmi now the question arises why vijay dashmi why not any other day because the phala the fruit of vijay dashmi dear devotees is that whatever devotional activity we start on the day of vijay dashmi it is a guarantee that that devotional activity will always be victorious because the name itself is vijay which means victory so whatever devotional activity we start on that day it is a guarantee it the power potency of that day is so high that whatever devotional activity we start that will never end whether it is increasing the chanting of our nam bhajan in the form of holy names nam japa or whether it is more hours of hari naam sankirtan or whether it is reading more of prabhupad's books or whether it is more of vaishnava seva whatever the limb of devotional service is when it is started on vijay dashmi it is a guarantee of maryada purushottam ramchandra that that personality will always be victorious he will never face failure in his life and aindra prabhu decided to take advantage of this day to start the 24 hour kirtan and sure enough we find dear devotees this year 2021 vijay dashmi marks 35 years of akhand hari naam sankirtan khanda means divided something that breaks akhand something that never breaks we find akhand guru tatva we said that chain of guru tatva undivided chain of guru tatva starting from nityananda prabhu or the supreme lord shri krishna himself similarly aindra prabhu started akhand hari naam sankirtan that hari naam sankirtan which has not even stopped for a minute in krishna balaram mandir it's been 35 years and not even one minute has passed where there has been no chanting of the holy names and that was started on the day of vijay dashmi so this is the first take home lesson dear devotees that the coming vijay dashmi that we find in 2021 we can take some aspect of devotional service and we can incorporate that in our lives and it is a guarantee that if the endeavor is sincere then maryada purushottam ramchandra guarantees that that devotional limb will never stop in our life whatever the devotional activity may be so on the day of vijay dashmi shri pad aindra prabhu reinaugurated the 24 hour kirtan which eventually gave happiness to the heart of shri pad aindra prabhu and not just hari naam sankirtan dear devotees the land of vrindavan dham was very very dear 
to the heart of Shripad Ayyendra Prabhu. In truest sense, Ayyendra Prabhu was a Brajabasi. Because we find Shripadev Goswami in the Bhagavatam, he draws parallels between two pastimes. First pastime is that of the Samudra Mantan pastime. And the second pastime is that of the friends of Krishna in Vrindavan Dham. Shukadev Goswami says, Mithai Kali Rabhuttesham Tad Arthe Tarsha Chetasam Aham Purvam Aham Purvam Natvam Natvam Iti Prabhu. Shukadev Goswami says, when the nectar was about to come from the churn churning of the ocean, Mithai Kali Rabhuttesham Tad Arthe Tarsha Chetasam, there arose a fight amongst the demons. What was the fight amongst the demons? Aham Purvam, Aham Purvam. I first, I first, I will take the nectar first. Natvam, Natvam, Iti Prabhu, you shouldn't get it. I will take the nectar, but you shouldn't get the nectar. This is the mentality of demons, Prabhupada says. This is the mentality of non devotees that they want to enjoy everything but they are unsatisfied when someone else gets the same thing. Aham Purvam, Aham Purvam, Natvam Natvam Iti Prabhu. You shouldn't get it, but I should only get the nectar. This is the mentality of the demons. Now comes the best part, dear devotees. Now Shukadev Goswami, in the start of the Brahma Vimohan Leela, he describes the friends of Krishna. He says, Yadi Duram Gataha Krishna, Vanasho Bhikshanayatvam Aham Purvam Aham Purvam Iti Samsprishare Mire. You see, the third line is exactly the same as that of the Samudra Mantan pastime. But here the difference is Shukadev Goswami says, Yadi Duram Gataha Krishna. When Krishna would go far away in the forest, Vanasho Bhikshanayatvam. And Krishna would go far in the forest and he would see different birds. He would see different plants. He would see different animals. And he would enjoy the beauty of the forest of Vrindavan. At that time, what would the friend say? Aham Purvam, Aham Purvam, Iti Sam Re Mire. I first, I first, I will go and first touch Krishna. But Shukadev Goswami says, here the mood is, the friends of Krishna are saying, I will go and touch Krishna, but in my endeavor of touching and being with Krishna, I will also inspire you to be with Krishna. This is the mood of Rajavasi. A Rajavasi is someone who wants to be with Krishna, but in the endeavor of being with Krishna, he also inspires others to be with Krishna. This is the real nature of Rajavasi. Unlike the demons that we find in Samudra Mantan pastime, Aham Purvam, Aham Purvam, Natvam Natvam Iti Prabhu. They wanted the nectar, but they did not want to give it to someone else. But on the flip side, the friends of Krishna, Aham Purvam, Aham Purvam, Iti Samsprishya Re Mere. I first, I will touch Krishna first, but in my endeavor of being with Krishna, I will also inspire you to be with Krishna. And this was Ayindra Prabhu. A truest Brajavasi in the real sense, inspiring anyone who came in contact with him about the Mahima of Vrindavan Dham. Aindrapur would make a very beautiful point about the power of devotional service in Vrindavan. Aindrapur would say, one year of devotional service in Vrindavan. Now just see the brilliance there, devotees. From here, it's just pastimes. There is no more philosophy from here. It's just pastimes. Aindrapur would say, that the power of devotional service in Vrindavan is so high that one year of devotional service in Vrindavan is equivalent to thousand years of devotional service anywhere on this planet. That's a very important point and that's a very powerful, very strong point. One year of devotional service in Vraj is equivalent to 1000 years of devotional service anywhere on this planet. Now, Aindrabha wouldn't stop here. Now, he was a person who would go into the math. He would go into the math calculation. And he would say, he would say, how much would an average individual live? We see in Kali, an average individual lives, for example, about 80 years. So 1,000 years divided by 80 gives us about 12 and a half. Let's take about 13, which means one year of devotional service in Vrindavan is equivalent to 13 lifetimes of devotional service anywhere on this planet. 
Indra Prabhu would say that is the power of Vrindavan Dham. Just one year of bhakti in Vraj Mandal is equivalent to 13 lifetimes of bhakti anywhere on this planet. He would say, who would be that person who would leave Vrindavan Dham to go somewhere else? Vrindavan has so much to offer. Just by living in Vrindavan Dham, one can make rapid advancement on this path of Krishna Bhakti. And time and again, he would quote Vrindavan Mahimamrita and Hari Bhakti Vilas to emphasize on this point of Vrindavan Dham. Likewise, in the month of Kartik, Aindrapu would say, we see in the month of Kartik, we all offer, we all offer da- ghee lambs to Damodar. But Aindrapu gave a very wonderful, very brilliant trick that we can on- incorporate from this Kartik. Aindra Prabhu said that if in the land of Vrindavan, if we offer ghee lambs, that ghee lamb that is lit with a tulsi stick. So we find after tulsi devi departs, we have dried tulsi stick. So if the ghee lamp is lit with a dried tulsi stick, and if in the land of Vrindavan, we offer that to Radha Damodar, then one gets million times the mercy, one million times the benefit, just by lighting the ghee lamp with a tulsi stick. And this doesn't stop here, devo- dear devotees. By lighting the ghee lamp with a tulsi stick, one gets one million times the benefit. And as we discussed in the land of Rindavan, one gets thousand times the benefit of his devotional service. And Aindra Prabhu would say, in the month of Kartik, in the month of Damodarju, one gets 160 times additional bonus, which means 1 million times multiplied by 1000 times multiplied by 160, which is equivalent to 160 billion, which means if one offers one ghee lamp, which is lit with a tulsi stick in the land of Rindavan, that one ghee lamp will give the benefit of 160 billion ghee lamps. That is the power of the land of Vrindavan. And Aindra Prabhu would say, who would be that person who will not want to take advantage of Vrindavan? If not during other months, at least in the month of Karthik, because every ghee lamb that we show to Damodar, to Radha Sham Sundar in Vrindavan Dham gives the benefit of 160 billion ghee lambs. He would say, who would not want to take advantage of this land? One can make leaps and bounds of spiritual progress just by residing in this land of Vrindavan Dham. Another time, a devotee, for the first time, he came to Vrindavan. And after an evening kirtan, he decided to meet Aindra Prabhu. And <laughs> this, is, this is so brilliant. He went to Aindra Prabhu and there was another devotee who was accompanying him. So that another devotee introduced that Prabhu, he is he's such and such devotee. And this devotee said that, Prabhu, I am... Goranga Chandra Das from Seattle. I, I, I know this devotee personally because he lives here in this congregation. So Prabhu was mentioning that for the first time when he went in 2009 to Vrindavan, after the evening kirtan at about 7 o'clock, he went up to Aindra Prabhu and he said, Prabhu, I am Goranga Chandra Das from Seattle. And when Aindra Prabhu heard this, Aindra Prabhu replied, he shot back by saying, Why? Now we see this question has no answer. I mean, what would be reply for why? He just said, I'm Goranga Chandra Das from Seattle. So Aindra Prabhu said, why? So he said, Prabhu, because I met the devotees in Seattle. Aindra Prabhu said, why? Now, now this devotee understood that his, his game was up. He understood that he was speaking to a Prabhupada disciple. So he decided to not speak anything because two times for every reply, Aindra Prabhu was saying, why? So finally, Aindra Prabhu said, I am from Virginia and I am living in Vrindavan. Who is stopping you? You are an Indian body. You have an Indian passport. Why are you living outside of Vrindavan when you can have the facility of living in Vrindavan Dham? I am from Arlington. I am from Virginia and I am living in the land of Radharani. Who is stopping you from living in the land of Srimati Radharani? So that is the reason Aindra Prabhu was asking why, why, which means why are you living outside of Vrindavan? You are an Indian bodied with an Indian passport. Just live in this land of Vrindavan and make your life successful. And time and again, Aindra Prabhu would say this, that Vrindavan Dham has everything to offer. Another time, 
a devotee had to leave Brindavan Dham due to some personal reasons. So he went up to Ayindra Prabhu to share this news that he is leaving Brindavan. So Ayindra Prabhu called him to his room. And we know that whenever someone asks a question to Ayindra Prabhu, the answer is never five or ten minutes. All the answers of Ayindra Prabhu are three and a half, four, four and a half, five hours long. One question Ayindra Prabhu would explain for about five hours. So now we can imagine when this devotee went up to Ayindra Prabhu to tell him that he is leaving Vrindavan Dham. Ayindra Prabhu was in no mood to encourage him to leave Vrindavan Dham. On the contrary, on the flip side, Ayindra Prabhu started quoting from Vrindavan Mahimamrita, from Radha Ras Sudhanidhi, from Hari Bhakti Vilas, from Krishna Bhavana Amrita, from Govinda Leela Amrita, and from all this esoteric texts as to the glories of Vrindavan Dham, as to how this land of Vrindavan has everything, that no one needs to leave this land of Vrindavan because in the land of Vrindavan, Radharani maintains you, Krishna maintains you. And Ayindra Prabhu would make this point, reiterating Rupa Goswami, that if a black ant can be, if a black ant on a black rock, in a black well, on a black night can be maintained by the black Lord, then will Krishna not maintain someone who is chanting the holy names? Of course he will maintain. If a black ant who is not doing bhajan is there on a black rock, in a black well, on a black night. No one is able to see the black ant, but Krishna still sees the black ant. He maintains the black ant and he also nourishes that black ant. So Ayindra Prabhu would say, if someone is living in the land of Radharani and is chanting her holy names, will Radharani not take care of her? Of course she will take care. It's, it's only a question of faith. So Ayindra Prabhu was trying to explain the Mahima of Vrindavan Dham as to how Braj has everything. And this answer went for quite some time, three, three and a four hours. And at one point when it was late at night, about 9, 9.30, there was a, there was a knock at Ayindra Prabhu's door. So Ayindra Prabhu opened the door and it was a devotee from South Africa who had come. And this devotee from South Africa had bought a bottle of ghee to give it to Ayindra Prabhu. So he said that Prabhu, I got this bottle of ghee from South Africa so that you can use it for your deity worship. And he gave this bottle of ghee to Ayindra Prabhu. And Ayindra Prabhu took it. And the moment he took it, he turned towards this devotee whom he was explaining all this while. He said, you see, in the land of Vrindavan, in the land of Radharani, Srimadhi Radharani maintains you. And Ayindra Prabhu went inside and he showed that only the previous day, his bottle of ghee had got completely over. The bottle of ghee had completely got over and Ayindra Prabhu had completely got, he had forgotten about it. But Radharani remembered and she sent a devotee from South Africa to give a bottle of ghee, a new bottle of ghee to Shripada Ayindra Prabhu. So Ayindra Prabhu looked to this devotee and said, you see, I did not even make an endeavor. I did not even tell anyone but in this land of Vrindavan, Radharani knows our heart's desire and she will fulfill everything. Our material desires, our spiritual desires in this land of Vrindavan, everything is fulfilled. So just live in this land of Vrindavan. And sure enough, this devotee did not leave Vrindavan. He had made all plans to leave Braja. But after that interaction with Aindra Prabhu, he did not leave Vrindavan. And I wouldn't take names, but this devotee is a very famous Kirtaniya in our Krishna consciousness moment. Just by that interaction of Ayindra Prabhu, he never left the land of Srimati Radharani. And if we think this is, this is all, Ayindra Prabhu was such a devotee who would go the extra mile to show Krishna that he was very serious on this path of Krishna Bhakti, that he would worship the trees of Vrindavan. Now, this is something that is... is unimaginable, worshipping the trees of Vrindavan. But Ayindra would actually worship the trees of Vrindavan because he would say that Prabodhananda Saraswati in Vrindavan Mahimamrita, Prabodhananda Saraswati makes this point that by worshipping the trees of Vrindavan, the trees of Vrindavan benedict us to eternally live in the land of Vrindavan. This is the power of the trees of Raja. So Ayindra would say that I do not want to miss out on an opportunity of not living in Vrindavan. So he would worship the trees, he would water 
the lotus feet of the trees only with this desire that he never leaves the land of Vrindavan. And very jokingly, very funny, in a very funny fashion, Aindra Prabhu would say that everyone takes three danda sannyas. We see sannyasis, they have a three danda sannyas. So Aindra Prabhu would say everyone takes a three danda sannyas, but I have taken tree danda sannyas because I am worshipping the trees of Vrindavan Dham. So in this way, Aindra Prabhu would make every endeavor to not only convince others of the glories of Vrindavan Dham, but he would also inspire them to take the residence of Rajdham. And this is actual definition of a Vrajavasi given by Shukadev Goswami in Canto 10. So in every manner, Aindra Prabhu was a genuine Vrajavasi inspiring everyone and motivating them on this path of Krishna Bhakti by taking up the residence of Vrindavan Dham. And we naturally find anyone who's attracted to Vrindavan is also attracted to Giriraji. Seldom do we find that a devotee is attracted to Braj but has no attraction to Giriraji. Everyone dearly loves Giriraji because he is the Mukut. He is the crown of Vrajadham. Like we find Sripad Raghunath Das Goswami. He says, Pramadamadana Leela Kandare Kandare Te Rachayati Navayuno Dvandva Masminna Lagnam Idikila Kaladartha Lagna Kasta Dvayor Me Shri Padra Gunad Das Goswami says, Nija Nikata Nivasam Dehi Govardhanatvam O Giriraji, my only desire is may I always live at your foothill. I do not want anything. I just want to live at your foothill. That is my only desire, O Giriraj. And likewise, we find in the life of Shri Padra Indra Prabhu, for him, Giriraji, was very dear to his heart. Once Srila Prabhupada came in the dream of Shripada Indra Prabhu and requested him to worship Krishna in the mood of Gopal. Prabhupada came in the dream of Shripada Indra Prabhu and asked him that, O oh, Indra Prabhu, please worship Krishna in the mood of Gopal. And Indra Prabhu, who was worshipping a Giriraji, he named his Giriraji as Giridari Gopal Sham because Prabhupada wanted him to worship Krishna in the mood of Gopal. He named his Giriraji as Giridari Gopal Sham. And to the right top corner, we find there is a photo of Giriraji. And that is the deity, dear devotees, of Giridari Gopal Sham that Ayindra Prabhu worshipped throughout his 24 years in Vrindavan Dham. So it's a very interesting point that. Even if our spiritual master has departed this world, if the disciple is sincere, then the spiritual master will still come and give instructions through dreams and through revelations. Sri Pada Prabhu describes that in the 1990s, he would be so eager to go to the bed, not because he was sleepy, but because when he would go to sleep, he would get tons and tons of spiritual realizations. Prabhupada would come in his dream and give so many realizations that he would be so eager. I think someone's mic is on. If you can, if you can just mute. Thank you. So, so Prabhupada would come in the dream of Sripad Aindra Prabhu and give him so many realizations that Aindra Prabhu would be keen on going to the bed every single day. So this is a point, dear devotee, is that even if our spiritual master has left this world, there is nothing to be sad because a Sadguru is always present. If the disciple is sincere, then the guru can still sow the seed of spiritual realizations in the heart, just like Prabhupada gave realizations in the heart of Sripad Aindra Prabhu. Likewise, Sripad Aindra Prabhu would make this point that what is the power of taking darshan of Giriraji? Aindra Prabhu would say that of all the devotional activities that are performed, the path of following Ekadishis, the tapasya of following Ekadishis is the highest. Why? Because Ekadishis give us pure devotional service, pure bhakti, prema bhakti. We find yesterday we celebrated the holy occasion of Ekadishi, Papa Mochini Ekadishi. And Aindra Prabhu would make this point that by following Ekadishis, one gets pure devotional service, prema bhakti. And Nirjala Ekadeshi that is there, 
that even supersedes all other ekadashis why because nirjala ekadashi has the benefit of all the 23 ekadashis and that ekadashi itself which means by following one nirjala ekadashi one gets the benefit of 24 ekadashis that is the power of nirjala ekadashi but now aindra bhavan didn't stop here he went on glorifying exponentially he said by fasting the half day fast of rama navami that the half day fast that we do on the occasion of ram navami we find in another 10 15 days we are going to celebrate the occasion of ram navami aindra prabhu said by fasting half day on ram navami one gets the benefit of performing thousand vratas of nirjala ekadashi just that half day of ram navami gives the benefit of following thousand nirjala ekadashis and by following the fast on narsingha chaturdashi we find in the month of may we will be celebrating narsingha chaturdashi and we fast till evening till dusk aindra prabhu said just by following narsingha chaturdashi's fast till the evening one gets the benefit of following about 10000 ram navami fast just by observing one narsingha chaturdashi fast one gets the benefit of following 10000 rama navami fast and then aindra prabhu continued by saying but one if someone follows janmashtami fast till midnight one gets the benefit of following one million ram navami fast that one fast that we do on the night of krishna janmashtami till midnight one gets the benefit of 1 million rama navamis and finally aindra prabhu concluded by saying but just by taking one darshan of giriraj ji one gets the benefit of millions upon millions upon millions upon millions ram navamis just by taking one darshan of giriraj ji he said this is the power of giriraj just by taking one darshan of him one gets the benefit of millions upon millions ram navami so he would say that who would be that person who would come to vrindavan and not take shelter of giriraj ji and this is the reason we find even rupa goswami nectar of instruction when he gives the hierarchy he places giriraj ji over the land of vrindavan because this land of giriraj this giriraj who is the best among servants haridas avarya can give so much benefit to us just by taking one darshan so in this way indra prabhu would encourage everyone to develop their attraction toward giriraj ji once a devotee once shri pad indra prabhu in fact asked the devotee to get eye drops for him because indra prabhu has some some something in his eye some issue in his eye so the doctor had asked him to buy eye drops so he asked the devotee to go and buy that eye drops and in fact that devotee is there on the call <laughs> who 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 mind remembered asked to go and buy that eye drops so he went and bought that eye drops and he gave it to aindra prabhu and aindra prabhu opened the eye drops and instead of putting it in his own eye you now aindra prabhu would wear a locket of giriraj ji so aindra prabhu took that drops eye drops and instead of putting it in his own eye he put it on the eyes of giriraj ji the locket that he was wearing aindra prabhu put it in the eyes of giriraj ji and looked at this devotee and said you know i don't take anything that is not offered to krishna propa says everything has to be taken after being offered to krishna even the eye drops aindra prabhu was so exalted that he would offer that eye drops to his giriraj ji and say you know i don't take anything that is not offered to krishna and after he put it to giriraj ji then he offered it in his own eyes so actually living the philosophy that propa has taught that everything has to be taken after being offered to the supreme lord and similarly as we mentioned aindra prabhu would wear a locket of giriraj ji it was it would always be close to his chest so aindra prabhu would very funny in a very funny fashion in a very joking way aindra prabhu would say that the reason i go to giriraj is because he would take his locket giriraj and he would place it on the big rocks of giriraj and he would say now my giriraj is completely recharged he would say that i go to giriraj so that my locket giriraj gets recharged 
he would keep the locket on the big rocks of giriraj ji and he would say now the recharge is being happening now my giriraj ji is big, is getting recharged and he would just he would just chuckle and he would just smile so aindra prabhu would have this very funny very interesting one liners that would make people crack you know they would people people would burst into laughter he would place it place his locket giriraj on the big rocks of giriraj and say now he is getting recharged please do not disturb so so in this way aindra prabhu was very very difficult to understand it's a very interesting point dear devotee is that to understand aindra prabhu we have to love him till the time we don't love aindra prabhu till that time we may not be able to understand his mood it is very easy to find faults and very easy to criticize shri pad aindra prabhu but for those who really genuinely love him can really understand every act or everything that prabhu says now this is very interesting we <laughs> we on in the background we find there's a clock and this clock we find has only numbers but has no hour hand no minute hand and no second hand and this is a clock that is there even till this date in shri pad aindra prabhu's room now we would be surprised and we would be perplexed as to how does this clock serve the purpose aindra prabhu's mood was because he was living in the land of vrindavan aindra prabhu would say that in vrindavan there is no concept of time there is no concept of time in vrindavan dham and it is for this reason aindra prabhu ripped apart the hours hands the seconds hands the minutes hands he ripped apart everything because in the land of vrindavan there is no concept of time and the second understanding that aindra prabhu had was 24 hours is too less for devotional service there is so much devotional service that needs to be done that if there is time concept or oh, 1 o'clock 2 o'clock 3 o'clock then we are all bound by time what aindra prabhu said that if if there is no time if i remove the seconds hand and the hours hand and the minute hand then i can do devotional service 24 hours a day and i am not bound by time so for this reason he just ripped up our the hours and the minutes and the seconds hand and said there is no concept of time devotional service 24 hours is very less for performing bhakti for performing prema bhakti this is so interesting the next time we go to aindra prabhu's room we can find this clock they are still they are still kept it and he would be so funny and he would have this so witty one liners that another time a temple president in the 1990s he came up to aindra prabhu because we find aindra prabhu would have a different style of dressing you see he would dress like the the local brajavasis especially if we find that the pujaris of radha raman they wear a cloth which is which goes this way and which goes this way and it is tied in the neck and the back is completely exposed so aindra prabhu would have that way of dressing up so one day in the 1990s one temple president came up to aindra prabhu and asked him that prabhu which ashram do you belong to because his dressing was such that he didn't look like a brahmachari didn't neither look like a grahastha neither look like a vanaprastha and definitely didn't look like a sanyasi so this temple president went up to aindra prabhu and asked prabhu which ashram do you belong to and aindra prabhu was so witty and he was so funny aindra prabhu said i'm not a brahmachari i am not a grahastha i am not a vanaprastha and i am not a sanyasi but in fact i am a brahmastha vanyasi he he just clumped all the four ashrams and he said i am a brahmastha vanyasi so in this way aindra prabhu would come up with this beautiful one liners that would just make people laugh and would help people appreciate the greatness that uh, he has after living in this land of vrindavan by chanting the holy name so many times he would come up with this beautiful one liners but there are instances where shripad aindra prabhu has been very heavy like a thunderbolt we find that this is the mood of a devotee vajradapi kathoram kusumadapi sukomalam a sadhu is someone who is as soft as a lotus and as heavy as a thunderbolt so we saw few instances very soft as a lotus but there are few instances dear devotees where aindra prabhu has been as heavy as a thunderbolt in the the early years of 2000 there was one brahmachari who was living next door to shripad aindra prabhu aindra prabhu was living in room number 89 
and this devotee was living in room number 90 or 90 or 91. And Aindrabha would have this habit that he would walk in the corridor and he would keep chanting his japa. So one day when he was chanting his japa in the corridor from room number 90, where this brahmachari was there, Aindra Prabhu could hear something. So Aindra Prabhu knocked the door and this devotee opened the door and it was Aindra Prabhu was standing outside and Aindra Prabhu was, was fuming. He was fuming with anger and he just barged into the room of this brahmachari. And actually what had happened is this devotee, this brahmachari was hearing to a cassette of a Mataji Singh. So Mataji was leading the Hare Krishna chanting and this brahmachari was hearing. So Aindra Prabhu went inside and looked around where that CD was or where that cassette was. And he found out and he broke that CD into two halves. And this devotee, this devotee didn't know what to say. He was completely, he was completely surprised. He didn't know what is going on. Aindra Prabhu just stormed inside and broke that CD into two halves. And Aindra Prabhu said that if you even hear a Mataji sing, if you even hear a Mataji's voice, then your Brahmachari Vrata will go for a toss. Because Maya is so powerful that even little, she wants little space, little crack in our consciousness and Maya just seeps in. So Aindra Prabhu said, if you hear a Mataji even singing, your Brahmachari Tapasya will go for a toss. So Aindra Prabhu broke that CD and then he went to his own room and got a CD and gave it in the hands of this devotee and said, if you want to hear something, hear this. And interestingly, that CD was Vrindavan Mellows, which Aindra Prabhu himself had sung. So he, he, Aindra Prabhu said, if you want to hear something, hear my Kirtan, hear Vrindavan Mellows, but don't hear a Mataji sing. So much care and so much compassion, but at the same time, heavy as a thunderbolt. Another instance, uh, after the morning Bhagavatam class was over, as we find nine o'clock Bhagavatam class is done. And immediately after that, the 24 hour Kirtan starts. So one time it so happened that the Bhagavatam class was done and this devotee was about to lead the Kirtan. Everything was ready, but somehow he had not started his Kirtan. And just a few minutes had passed. So Aindra Prabhu somehow happened to be in the temple that time. And when Aindra Prabhu saw this, in front of everyone in Krishna Valram Mandir, Aindra Prabhu chastised him. Aindra Prabhu just blasted that devotee by saying, you are embarrassing me in front of my God brothers. All my God brothers are present here and the Bhagavatam class is done and you have not even started the 24 hour Kirtan. You are embarrassing me in front of everyone. And this was in front of 100, 150 devotees in Krishna Valram Mandir. So many times Aindra Prabhu would be very heavy as far as standards are concerned. 24 hours means 24 hours, no stopping. It has to be Akhanda Kirtan Mandali. Another time, there was a devotee who, who had become Krishna conscious. He and his brother both were Krishna conscious. And somehow or the other, they couldn't convince their father to become Krishna conscious. Because many times we find that familiarity breeds contempt, that we may become, we may be Krishna conscious, but somehow or the other, our near and dear ones may not take up this path of Krishna Bhakti. So this devotee tried to convince his father multiple times, but somehow it didn't work. So he thought to himself that I am inspired by Sripad Aindra Prabhu. So let me take my father to Sripad Aindra Prabhu and let Sripad Aindra Prabhu speak to my father. Now this was a big thing because we know Aindra Prabhu can be very heavy. He can be very heavy like a thunderbolt. So this devotee, he took his father to Sripad Aindra Prabhu. And Aindra Prabhu, dear devotees, just made one point. He didn't give a Bhagavatam class. He just made one point. And that one point was so powerful that the father of this devotee ended up becoming a Krishna Bhakta. And we will be very keen and very eager to know what Aindra Prabhu said. Aindra Prabhu just made one statement. Aindra Prabhu said, if Putra, not a Bhakta, he is a Mutra. <laughs> Which means if the son is not Krishna conscious, then he is a waste. If Putra, not a Bhakta, then he is a Mutra. And that father who was not very inclined towards Krishna consciousness, 
when he heard this from ayendra prabhu he started nodding he said he said yes 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 you are correct putra has to be krishna conscious and he encouraged his children to take up this path and what to speak of the children he himself accepted this path of krishna bhakti and dear devotees this is real example of lava matra sadhu sangha just fraction of a second association of a mahabhagavat and his father became a krishna bhakta very interesting point if putra not a bhakta he is a mutra he is a waste another instance a young couple they were about to get engaged or they had just got engaged and they went up to ayendra prabhu to share this news and to get his blessings so that when they went to ayendra prabhu to tell prabhu that prabhu we are about to get engaged or we have got engaged now what would the general reaction be the general reaction would be we would expect ayendra prabhu to say oh very nice congratulations i pray for you i give you my blessings and so on and so forth but ayendra prabhu was very different when ayendra prabhu heard this ayendra prabhu became so angry he became so furious he was fuming with anger and he looked straight into the eye of the prabhu ji and this is probably as heavy it can get they had just got engaged and ayendra prabhu looked into the eye of prabhu ji and he said even the dog sees the eye of the dog beautiful how better are you which means even the dog sees a female dog beautiful how better are you you have got a manushya jeevan you have got a human life you are in vrindavan dham and you are doing the same thing that the dogs are doing how better are you and then he turned towards the mata ji and gave her a stick in her hand and he said make sure this rascal doesn't touch you and he gave the stick and said if at all he touches you make sure you whip him with this stick because he has no adhikar to touch you you are eternally married to krishna you eternally belong to krishna make sure this rascal never touches you and ayendra prabhu gave that stick in our hand and 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 dear devot is they are just about to get engaged and we can imagine how heavy that can be but they took it in the right perspective why because they loved ayendra prabhu this is the point dear devotees till the time we have not developed genuine love for ayendra prabhu we may not understand his mood and ayendra prabhu knew exactly only for those who dearly loved ayendra prabhu ayendra prabhu would be heavy with them so there are a few instances this way where ayendra prabhu was vajradapi kathora very strong as a thunderbolt so it's it's 9 10 here uh, pacific which means it is about 12 o'clock 12 10 in the east coast um i just want to know from the devotees i want to beg for about 10 to 15 minutes extra so that i can wrap up there are some very beautiful interesting past times that are yet to come if the devotees can grant me another 10 to 15 minutes not more then uh, we can we can wrap up this discussion uh, yes prabhu ji please go ahead thank you so much mata ji as we know ayendra prabhu's life was was hari naam sankirtan naam sankirtan was the life of shri pad ayendra prabhu and not just shri pad ayendra prabhu it is the life and soul of gauranga mahaprabhu it is the backbone of our krishna consciousness movement so in 2011 this is this is my personal uh, interaction in 2011 of april exactly a decade ago when i went to vrindavan and when i was in ayendra prabhu's room i heard something that stuck with me and probably something that i will never forget in my life the devotee whom i met he made a such a brilliant point he said he was from russia he said prabhu i was living a life in russia and i was into all types of intoxications he said all types of intoxications that are there on the list i had ticked all the boxes lsd drugs this that all the intoxications i had ticked all of them there was probably nothing in the list that i had not consumed all the intoxicants i had consumed he said later someone told me that there is a very very nice profound musician who is there in vrindavan and he was telling me that i didn't know where vrindavan is but they just told me that 3 hours from delhi is a place called vrindavan and there a very beautiful proficient musically inclined singer is there 
who can charm the hearts and who can transform the life so why don't you take a flight from russia and go to vrindavan just to meet him once so this person who was a hardcore intoxicate intoxicant who was who had taken all types of intoxications he decided to take his flight from russia from moscow he came to delhi and from delhi he took his car to vrindavan dham and when he reached vrindavan dham he freshened up and in the evening aindra prabhu stormed into krishna balaram mandir like the golden lion just like you find when the lion comes into the forest naturally there is silence there is complete silence because everyone is in awe of seeing the lion and naturally we find when aindra prabhu would come into the temple devotees would just move to the side just to have one glimpse of shripad aindra prabhu was like the lion we find towards the right also we there is the copper beard that he has and this copper hair that he has he, he looks almost like a lion who is ready to roar in krishna balaram mandir this was a typical kartik look that shripad aindra prabhu would have so this devotee came to krishna balaram mandir he got he was fresh and in the evening when aindra prabhu came to kirtan he decided to attend aindra prabhu's kirtan and during those days towards the end aindra prabhu would do kirtan only from 6:30 to 7 last 30 minutes aindra prabhu would leave the kirtan and here comes the interesting point dear devotees when the devotee told me i literally had goosebumps in my hand the devotee told me he said prabhu those 30 minutes of kirtan was the most powerful intoxicant i ever had in my life he literally had tears in his eyes he was saying he, he was saying that prabhu i had taken all top types of intoxications but that 30 minutes of aindra prabhu's kirtans was the most powerful intoxicant i had never witnessed an intoxication intoxication as powerful as aindra prabhu's kirtan and what is the transformation he left russia he left all the intoxications and in 2011 when i was there he was serving as a brahmachari in krishna balram mandir he was serving the deities of aindra prabhu just by hearing 30 minutes of kirtan of aindra prabhu this is the transformation dear devotees and hardcore intoxicant can get transformed into a brahmachari so we all have we all definitely have hope this is the point i would want to make here that if we are not hearing shripad aindra prabhu kirtans then we are surely missing a burst of ecstasy in our lives because aindra prabhu kirtans can really transform lives to all the parents who are there on this call if our children are not taking up to this path of krishna bhakti due to different reasons then please play the kirtans of aindra prabhu for 6 to 8 months or maximum to 1 year it is my guarantee it is my guarantee that after 1 year all of them would be chanting the holy names and why do i say so because the place where i am there in seattle the youth the youth who are there aged from 8 till about 20 none of them were chanting the holy names as far as nam japa is concerned one year back but in the last one year they have heard so much about aindra prabhu that every youth here in seattle chants 16 rounds every youth even the small kids so much so that now the spring break is going on and the kids chant 32 and 40 and 48 rounds just by hearing the kirtans of aindra prabhu so to all the parents this is my humble two cents that if our kids are not very serious on this path please play the kirtans of aindra prabhu it is my guarantee that they will take up this path of krishna bhakti and for those devotees who are already there in this moment and who are chanting 16 rounds and following the four regulative principles the kirtans of aindra prabhu will help us give an additional boost will give us that intensity that thirst that eagerness that is required to get krishna in this lifetime and sure enough as the devotee said aindra prabhu's kirtans are the most powerful intoxicant that one can one can ever come across another time a devotee uh, he had just you know he had a he had just given birth to a small child so the prabhu ji went up to aindra prabhu to to get blessings for his child and aindra prabhu at that time was cooking so his hands were were dirty so aindra prabhu said how can i bless my hands are dirty 
So this devotee said that Prabhu, your hands can never be dirty. Your hands are lotus hands. Please bless him. So then Ayindra Prabhu, he, with that same hands, he kept his hand on the head of the small child and he said, may you become a fired up Kirtaniya. Because without becoming a fired up Kirtaniya, there is no hope in this world. There is no hope in Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga is so dark that without being fired up, without having that fire, without having that intensity, there is no hope in this dark age. So this is not just a blessing, dear devotees, but this is an instruction probably to everyone that Harinam Sankirtan is meant for everyone and it is the backbone of Gauranga Mahaprabhu's movement. And Krishna Bhakti means getting fired up, having that intensity, that thirst, that greed to get Krishna, which Aindra Prabhu had. And likewise, another time, one devotee in evening was, was leading Kirtan in the temple. And Aindra Prabhu from behind was watching this devotee lead the Kirtan. And after the Kirtan was done, Aindra Prabhu turned to him and in a very joking way, in a very funny fashion, Aindra Prabhu turned to him and said, you can copy my melodies, but you can't copy my bhav. You can't copy my consciousness. Sure enough, you can copy my melodies, but you can't copy my bhav. You can't copy my consciousness. And this is a, this is a very interesting point that we find so many devotees across this world. They all chant Aindra Prabhu's melodies. But Aindra Prabhu was making this point here that in order to resonate with my consciousness, what is required is purity. As Prabhupada says, purity is the force. And Aindra Prabhu literally had that purity in his heart because of which he could transform multiple lives. So Aindra Prabhu, very funny, in a very funny fashion, he said, you can copy my melodies, but you can copy my bhav, you can copy my consciousness. And not just Nam Sankirtan, dear devotees, Aindra Prabhu had beautiful realizations even as far as the holy name is concerned. Of course, we do not have time to go through both the realizations that I've, I've, I've written it down, but there is one that I really want to share here. Aindra Prabhu would say that the holy name that we chant is filled with Gauranga Nam. All the names that we have in the, in the chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra in the form of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ayendra Prabhu would say, every name is nothing but Gaur Nam. How? Now he would also explain it. He would say, first is Hare. What is Hare? We find Hare is the vocative case in Sanskrit. But the root word is Hari. From Hari comes Hare. So Ayendra Prabhu would say, the root word is Hari. But who is that Hari? That Hari is Krishna. But who is that Krishna? He is Gaur. He is Gauranga. Which means Hare can be replaced with Gaur. And then we have Krishna. We say Hare Krishna. Who is that Krishna? Krishna is again Gaur. Which means Hare can be replaced with Gaur. And Krishna can also be replaced with Gaur. Now comes the second line. We In the second line we have Hare Rama. So Hare is again Gaur. And Rama. So Ram here has two understandings. One is Raghupati Ram. But the more Gaudi understanding is the Ram means Radhika Raman, that Krishna who gives happiness to the heart of Srimati Radharani. So who is Radhika Raman? He is Krishna, which means that Ram is nothing but Krishna and that Krishna is nothing but Gaur, which means Hare is Gaur, Krishna is Gaur and Rama is also Gaur. And now Aindrapur would say, now replace Hare with Gaur, Krishna with Gaur and Rama with Gaur. What we get is Gaur, 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 Gaur. He would say, you look, you see, the whole Hare Krishna Mahamandra is just filled with Gaur Nam. It is only filled with Gauranga Nam. And likewise, he would also say that Hare is nothing but Gadhai. So he would say, Gadhai, Gaur, Gadhai, Gaur, 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 Gadhai, Gadhai. And the second line would become Rama is Nitai. So he would say, Gaur Nitai, Gaur Nitai, Nitai Nitai, Gaur Gaur, Gadai Gaur, Gadai Gaur, Gaur Gaur, Gadai Gadai, Gaur Nitai, Gaur Nitai, Nitai Nitai, Gaur Gaur. So Indra would say that based on our advancement, we can understand that the holy name has Gaur Nam, it has 
It has the name of Gadhadar. And actually, Aindrapur also gives a very beautiful understanding as to why we chant Hare Krishna and not Radhe Krishna. But I think in the interest of time, uh, we will not be able to cover that. But here we find down below is the most auspicious bead bag of Sripad Aindrapur. That bead bag that opened up the doors of Golak Vrindavan for Sripad Aindrapur. Uh, we, are, we are very fortunate that we are able to take darshan of the bead bag of Sripad Aindrapur. And towards the right, we find he has written a very beautiful note that is still present outside his door. So Aindrapur would have various notes like this and he would stick it outside his door. And here in this note, we find Aindrapur was writing, if you have not completed your required daily 16 rounds of Hari Nam, then you should know that you have no more important service to your Guru and your Guru Parampara than to finish your Japa Vrata. Even if you think you have finished your Nam Bhajan, then please mercifully leave me alone. For now, so I may hope to sooner improve mine. Your servant Aindra Das. Such a powerful, such a strong statement that there is nothing greater than our 16 rounds of holy name. That is the most important limb that we should be doing, especially in Brahma Murta. And Aindrapa would have made various quotes like this he would put out and some quotes are there where he would put the skull and the cross and he would say, don't disturb, do not disturb, Nam Bhajan in progress, please do not disturb. And he, he would get really angry when someone would disturb him and he would chant the holy names. So this is an inspiration that we all can take from the life of Aindra Prabhu that there is nothing in Kali that supersedes the chanting of the holy names. Every single thing is secondary. It is subordinate to the holy names. But Nam is the ultimate. And this is also the point that Jiva Goswami makes in Sandarbhas that all the other devotional activities that are there, they act as supporting limbs to the holy name. But the holy name is the mukut. It's the crest jewel of all the devotional activities. So in this way, Indrapa would have very strong points about holy name and very strong realizations about Harinam Prabhu. And here we find, we find Golok Vrindavan in front of our eyes. <laughs> for, for those who have not uh, realized Golok Vrindavan, at least speaking for myself, I have no realization whatsoever. Sri Pada Indrapa would in a very important way and very emphatic way, Aindrapu once said, to the right we find, Aindrapu says, my room is Navadweep. My room is not different from Nitya Navadweep in the spiritual world. Navadweep means Goloka. And my room is Goloka. And anyone who doubts it is a fool. So, so there is no ambiguity of doubting. Anyone who doubts it is a fool. Non-different from Goloka. My room is non-different from Navadweep Dham. Gaur Nitai are really there. They are real. They are the lords of Nitya Navadweep. Try to understand. As much as Navadweep is not different from Vrindavan Dham, so Vrindavan Dham is not different from Navadweep Dham. It is a question of the position of the heart. You are performing Sankirtan Yagya for the pleasure of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda in Vrindavan Dham. You will be remembering Navadweep Dham. And to the left we find dear devotees, this is that glorious room of Sri Pada Indra Prabhu, which is still present in the Brahmachari Ashram. You see, when we enter to the right, we find a big tree. That's a Tamal tree that Aindra Prabhu would worship. As we discussed in the start, Aindra Prabhu would say that by worshipping the trees, the trees benedict us to eternally live in Prajadham. And that is the Tamal tree he would worship. And straight ahead we find the lodge of his life, Gauranga Nityananda, called as Nitai Sachi Sutta. And not just this dear devotee, Aindra Prabhu would worship thousands and thousands of Shaligram. He would have Radharani Deity. He would have Nitai Gauranga. He would have Giridari Gopal Sham, as we discussed. He would have small Gaurnita deities that he got from Brooklyn. He would have Ananga Manjari deity. Ananga, Man, Ananga Manjari was the life and soul of Sri Pada Indra Prabhu. So in this way, his altar was completely packed. And if this is fascinating, dear devotees, the icing on the cake is Sri Pada Indra Prabhu would cook on his own. He would never eat from the temple. He was so renounced that he would cook on his own, he would eat on his own, no depending on anyone. 
so every day he would spend about four and a half hours of deity worship massaging and oiling every single shaligram watering every single shaligram decorating and dressing his deities cooking for them bathing them so on and so forth every day four and a half hours of deity worship chanting minimum 64 rounds of hari nam japa serving hari nam sankirtan in the temple weekends dressing radha sham sundar in the temple motivating and inspiring others on this path of krishna bhakti and the list goes on and on dear devotees but we find that sadhus when they come in this world they also display their antilila pastimes when they have to finally depart this world and this is the most heartbreaking for any devotee especially for those who have been with aindra prabhu and those who have who have loved aindra prabhu dearly aindra prabhu's departure is always very heartbreaking but aindra prabhu gave various indications of his departure once a devotee uh, was going to loi bazaar and he requested aindra prabhu that prabhu would you also want to come with me to loi bazaar because this devotee was going to buy dress for his deities so when aindra prabhu heard he said well no probably you can go ahead so this devotee said prabhu why don't you come you can also see some deities for your gaurnitai so when aindra prabhu heard this he said okay i will also accompany you and both of them in cycle rickshaw they went to loi bazaar and when this devotee was searching for dress aindra prabhu also was also looking for the dress for his gaurnitai but somehow his attention got shifted to a nearby bookstore and aindra prabhu immediately went to that bookstore and was seeing various books and finally when this devotees uh, when he had done with purchasing deity dresses he came back to aindra prabhu and he saw aindra prabhu was reading some book so he was naturally curious to know what book aindra prabhu was reading so he was thinking to himself maybe it is govinda lilamrita maybe it is krishna karunamrita maybe it is radha rasa sudanidhi some very exalted book because aindra prabhu was of that stature so he was curious to know what book aindra prabhu was reading so he asked aindra prabhu that prabhu which book is this and aindra prabhu replied you won't understand <laughs> so so this this devotee became more curious he said prabhu at least at least let me know what the name is aindra prabhu said no you won't understand so then i he this devotee asked aindra prabhu repeatedly prabhu please tell me what the name of the book is prabhu please tell me what the name of the book is and then finally aindra prabhu turned the book and he showed the cover page and the devotees the cover page read different hairstyles for women this was the cover page of that book and aindra prabhu was reading it so this devotee was perplexed he said different hairstyles for women he was perplexed and aindra prabhu said i told you you will not understand and then finally aindra prabhu said i am preparing for my next life that's it he said i am preparing for my next life and that is the reason i am going through this book and the book read different hairstyles for women so aindra prabhu was actually demonstrating that he is none other than radharani's dear maid servant in the mood of a manjari another time a german devotee was giving a class on book distribution it was the month of book distribution marathon and he was inspiring everyone that oh you should go out and distribute books this is the month of book distribution and so on and so forth he was trying to inspire everyone with his brahad murdanga transcendental book distribution but at the end of his discussion he made a point he said that those devotees who don't go out in this month of december to distribute books they are like women who are just sitting at home now this was a point that was maybe controversial so he said that those who are not going outside to distribute books they are like women and aindra prabhu was standing behind near the tulsi and aindra prabhu put his hand up and he said well in vrindavan we don't mind being a woman we would love to be a woman in vrindavan which means aindra prabhu was giving a hint of his spiritual swarup of his manjari bhav he very in a very funny fashion he put his hand up and said in vrindavan we don't mind being a woman we would love to be a woman in vrindavan and likewise on another instance there was a brahmachari who was having doubts of his ashram whether to be a grahastha whether to remain a brahmachari he was completely confused so he went up to aindra prabhu 
and as we discussed it, uh, Indra Prabhu's answers would be three and a half, four, four and a half hours long. So uh, Indra Prabhu, when he heard this, that this devotee was in dilemma of the ashram, uh, Indra Prabhu gave a long answer, quoting different, different shastras and so many other scriptures. And he was convincing him to stay in this ashram of Brahmachari. And then finally, uh, Indra Prabhu said, he said, if you want to associate with the women, if you want to associate with the lady, you associate with me. I will show you what real womanhood is. <laughs> he said, I will show you what real womanhood is. You don't associate with the ladies of this world. You associate with me. I will fulfill your heart's desire. I will show you what real womanhood is. So time and again, Aindra Prabhu was demonstrating this point that he is none other than Radharani's dear maid servant in the spiritual world. So he would give this indication of his departure. And finally, dear devotees, on the 16th of July, 2010, 11 years ago, on the night of 16th July, when Aindra Prabhu was lighting, when he was getting ready to cook for his deities, which he would do at night, unfortunately, Prabhuji did not realize that there is a gas leak in his room. So when he was about to lit, when he was about to light the fire, because there was a gas leak in the room, the whole room, dear devotees, went up in flames. The whole room went up in flames and there was, there was smoke completely. And as we know that when there is smoke, the smoke naturally consumes the oxygen that is there. So breathing becomes a, a difficulty. We start choking because the smoke starts consuming oxygen. And Aindrabhu could not exit his room because his room had three doors. There was a normal door. There was a mosquito net door. And then there was a recording door that he had imported from New York, a soundproof door. So even though Aindrapu was banging on the door, people could not hear because it was a soundproof door. And all the brahmacharis had gone to sleep. It's so heartbreaking, dear devotees. All brahmacharis had gone to sleep and Aindrapu over here was knocking the door and no one could hear. And his room was up in fire. It was up in flames. And at that instance, dear devotees, Sripad Aindrapu decided to take shelter of his Gaurnitai. When he saw that there is nothing else for him to get out of this room, Aindra Prabhu decided to take shelter of his Gauranga and Nityananda. And he went behind Nityananda Prabhu and offered his obeisances. And in that obeisances mood, Aindra Prabhu left this body. We find Krishna, he says that Manmana Bhavamad Bhakto Madhya Jimam Namaskuru. He says, think about me and offer your respectful obeisances to me. And here Sripad Aindra Prabhu in his departure is not only thinking about Krishna, he is even demonstrating it through his actions. The next day morning, dear devotees, when they broke open the door, the whole room was filled with smoke because there was no window in Aindra Prabhu's room that could let out the smoke. The whole room was filled with smoke and they were trying to settle the smoke and they were saying, Aindra Prabhu, are you there? Aindra Prabhu, are you there? Prabhu, where are you? Are you there? And when the smoke settled down, dear devotees, it had been more than 10 hours after Aindra Prabhu's departure. And Aindra Prabhu was still offering his obeisances to his Nityananda Ram. He was found offering his obeisances to Nityananda Prabhu in the morning. It had been hours after his departure, but his body was still giving obeisances to Nityananda Prabhu. This is, this is so inspiring and so motivating dear devotees when we are cooking our hands sometimes get burnt and immediately we look for water or we look for haldi or any of those things but i think seldom do we remember the supreme lord or his holy names and here is a devotee amidst fire amidst flames is giving obeisances to nityananda prabhu and saying that my dear lord i have given my life to you you protect me you maintain me and we find this is how that night looked. We find to the top right, dear devotees, to the top right, we find that the whole room is completely burnt. We see the door and the whole, everything is completely filled with black. It's because of the smoke and the door is completely burnt. So there was no question of Aindra Prabhu leaving the room. And we find that every, everything around is completely black and devotees are kind, trying to color it and they're trying to remove the smoke and the dust from the Shaligrams and from his deities. The room was completely uh, gone because of the fire and because of the smoke, but Aindra Prabhu was giving his obeisances to Nityananda Prabhu. 
so inspiring dear devotees when was the last time we heard anyone amidst departure amidst fire leaving this world giving obeisance to nityananda prabhu even when someone is alive it is sometimes very difficult to offer our obeisances and here is a devotee not just offering obeisances when he was alive but even after his departure his body is still offering obeisances to nityananda prabhu and this is very interesting his grace adi gadadhar prabhu he said a very beautiful thing because we all know adi gadadhar prabhu was a doctor by profession when i indra when he got to know about this he made a very brilliant point as far as medical science is concerned his grace adi gadadhar prabhu said that he said prabhu when there is smoke in the room naturally breathing becomes difficult and when breathing becomes difficult naturally everyone will want to expand their chest because they want to breathe more heavily because the more you expand your chest you can breathe more um, easily because more oxygen can get into the lungs but he said in the case of aindra prabhu it is so baffling that he did not expand his chest but when he gave obeisances naturally your chest contracts when we give obeisances the chest contracts and that makes breathing more difficult and he said prabhu this is very interesting because in medical science no normal person will give obeisances he will not do something that will contract the chest but here is a personality who was ready to kick medical science to the side he was ready to contract his chest but he was not willing to leave his this world without offering obeisances to nityananda prabhu adigadar prabhu literally had tears in his eyes and he was saying that i have seen so many patients and all of them probably would expand their chest but aindra prabhu is one in billion who was ready to contract his chest by giving of obeisances to nityananda prabhu it is it is it is so heartbreaking and it is so motivating at the same time that if someone is surrendered to the lotus feet of aindra prabhu naturally they will imbibe his mood of complete surrender that is atmanivedanam this is the final glimpse of shripada aindra prabhu dear devotees to so the left we find when aindra prabhu was brought outside in the morning of the 17th of july we find when the where the garlands are put that is the face of aindra prabhu and we, if we closely observe his body is in panchanga obeisances if we, if, we, if we closely see we can see his knees and it the body is kept sideways so his body was still in the mood of offering panchanga obeisances and towards the right we find the most holy lotus feet of param pooja pad nitya leela pravishta shri pad aindra prabhu we started our discussion dear devotees by maharaj rahugan's past time as to how shukadev goswami says that if for advancement in bhakti if we need something it is only the mercy it is the lotus feet dust of pure vaishnavas and here we find dear devotees even though aindra prabhu has left this world we are fortunate for those devotees who clicked this last photo shri pad aindra prabhu where his lotus feet has been displayed so we can at least if not physically we can at least virtually touch the lotus feet of shri pad aindra prabhu and beg for his mercy in our lives so that in some lifetime we can also make leaps and bounds of spiritual progress like that he made finally to wrap up our discussion dear devotees shri pad aindra prabhu in the spiritual world as we discussed is the manjari maid servant of radharani and towards the left we find aindra prabhu had actually displayed this in his book the cover page of his book has uh, the has the description of who he is in the spiritual world we find radharani is sitting and radharani is keeping her hand on one manjari and that manjari dear devotees is none other than shri pad aindra prabhu in the spiritual world shri pad aindra prabhu's eyes are closed in complete mesmerization of being in close proximity of shrimati radharani and aindra prabhu is playing the musical instrument and towards the right we find that same radharani when she comes as gauranga mahaprabhu mahaprabhu is keeping his hands again on aindra prabhu and aindra prabhu is again in close proximity of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu so whether it is shrimati radharani or whether it is shri chaitanya mahaprabhu aindra prabhu has his spot in both their past times which only shows as to how exalted and how self realized parambhujya bhagwan shri pad aindra prabhu was so 
finally to wrap up dear devotees bhaktivinoda thakur he makes this point that if at all on this day if there is anything that we can ask aindra prabhu that is only one thing bhaktivinoda thakur says nij karma guna dosh jai jai janme pai janme janme je ho tava naam guna gai ei matra asha mama tumara charane ahay tu ki bhakti ridhe jage anukshane o shri pada indra prabhu on this day the only thing that we ask from you is nija karma guna dosh jai janme pai wherever my karma takes me let it take me because i have no control over it wherever krishna wants to place me in which your who which your mother's womb krishna wants to place me let him place me but o oh supreme lord my only desire is janme janme je ho tava naam guna gaaye may lifetime after lifetime may my tongue lifetime after lifetime keep singing only the glories of shripad aindra prabhu ei matra asha mama tumara charane o oh krishna this is the only desire we have from you we are not asking for dhana jana sundari we are not asking for anything o oh krishna on this day we are only asking that may lifetime after lifetime may we remember and keep chanting the glories of shripad aindra prabhu and may we develop ahai to ki bhakti unto his lotus feet ahai to ki bhakti ridhe jage anukshane may we develop pure prema bhakti unto the lotus feet of param pooja pat shripad aindra prabhu o oh krishna o oh gopinath o oh shamsundar this is our only desire as shukadev goswami and prabhupad their time and again mention that attachment to a pure vaishnav opens the gates of of goloka vrindavan may we never forget his sacrifice in spreading the holy names thank you very much shripad aindra prabhu for appearing on this day and blessing us with your presence and thank you so much to all the devotees for being on this call i know i have exceeded way beyond the limit and i apologize for uh, i apologize to the to the leaders and the organizers but there was there was so much to discuss about shripad aindra prabhu and aindra prabhu is a topic that we discuss only once a year so i am extremely sorry i beg at your feet that please forgive me for going over time and if there was any inspirational point from this the whole and soul credit goes to all the associates of shripad aindra prabhu who have very mercifully given out these past times to everyone and finally we thank shila prabhupad for giving us this wonderful jewel in our life from whom we can take inspiration on this path of bhakti shripad aindra prabhu avir bhav divas ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai gaur bhakta vrind ki jai thank you very much hare krishna